Today we discuss the exercise questions of the chapter motion in a play. First question: State for each of the following physical quantities, scalar or vector. Here, acceleration is a vector quantity. Then we can have displacement is a vector quantity and angular velocity is also a vector quantity. Question 2. Pick out the two scalar quantities in the following list. Two scalar quantities are work and current are the scalar quantities. Work has no direction and current has magnitude and direction but it does not obey vector algebra therefore it is a scalar quantity. Then question 3, pick out the only vector quantity. Impulse is the only vector quantity there. Question 4, stay with reasons. Whether the following algebraic operations with scalar and vector physical quantities are meaningful. The first one, adding any two scalars. Adding any two scalars is not meaningful. Because you know you cannot add distance and time. Okay, so you can add, you can multiply distance and time, but you cannot add. It is meaningless when you add two different, totally different quantities. Part B: adding a scalar to a vector of the same dimension. So again, it's a scalar. Scalar has no uh, direction therefore it is not possible to add in that way then multiplying any vector by any scalar so multiplication of vector by scalar already we have discussed in the chapter it is possible so for example you can uh, multiply two neutron by a scalar quantity two next multiplying any two scalars it is possible to multiply any two scalars for example when you multiply speed and time uh, you will get a distance then next adding any two vectors so here carefully you have to see there adding any two vectors one thing you have to see you can add two vectors which are in the same plane you cannot add two vectors which are in different planes so it is not meaningful then adding a component of a vector with the same vector okay once you go for adding a component with the same vector it is possible because the component and the vectors are in the and the vector are in the same plane then next question five state true or false the magnitude of a vector is always a scalar is true magnitude of a vector if you take only magnitude you will get a scalar quantity then next each component of a vector is always scalar no the component of the vector is also a vector so it is false then part c the total path length is always equal to magnitude of the displacement vector which means total path length means the distance traveled by the object distance is always equal to displacement not correct distance is equal to magnitude or displacement only in the case of straight line motion here it is mentioned always therefore it is not correct then next the average speed of a particle defined as total path length divided by the time taken to cover the path that means uh, average speed you know is either greater or equal to the magnitude of average velocity you know distance is greater or equal to displacement therefore average uh, speed is always greater or equal to average velocity therefore it is true then but the three vectors not lying in a plane can never add up to give a null vector. So you can add if they are in a plane, then only. 
okay therefore it's already a negative sentence so it is true now next establish the vector inequalities geometrically or otherwise three relations are given there so what we have to prove we take case a in case a we have to prove that modulus of a plus b here a plus b you have to take as a single vector as a result of addition a plus b just like we say r is equal to a plus b like you have to take it as a single vector is less than or equal to mod of a plus mod of b here a and b are taken separately magnitude of a and magnitude of b separately okay so we can try for a geometric proof here so here you can see a plus b two two vectors we can take okay so vector a and uh, vector b so we have a and b add both the vectors you will get the resultant vector which will be a plus b so if you take a mod of this then in this case you will get them equal a b if a and b are the same direction then a plus b is equal to mod of a plus mod of b equal to mod of a plus b now so the equal condition we can prove like that now next uh, we take uh, the second condition for which we can consider the triangular law of uh, vector addition so we have a then we can have b then we can have the resultant vector that is a plus b as i told you we have to take as a single vector that one so you have a b then a plus b so as per triangular law of vector addition you know that they form the sides of a triangle and in triangle you know the relation always the sum of two sides is greater than the third side sum of two sides that means modulus of a plus modulus of b is greater than the modulus of the resultant a plus b so that will be given here you can see mod of a plus b is less than mod of a plus mod of b hence using these two diagrams we can prove the first condition now come to case b a plus b mod of a plus b greater than or equal to mod of mod of a minus mod of b okay so here the first part i'm taking the modulus and i'm going to square it so here solution of part b so you have mod of a plus b like this we can write then you will get a square plus b square mod of a plus b square so b square plus 2ab cos theta so here you have to see as i told you Uh, a plus b mod when you take together you have to get as a single vector so this formula single vector like a plus b is equal to r if you take like this then r is equal to because the rule we have to apply r square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta so it is by applying the cos rule now in second case we have taken a and b separately that means a and b considered as just two numbers just like here this is 5 because already modulus is taken then modulus of b 
because this is three like like that just two numbers we have today if you take just two numbers then it will be uh, what is that modulus of five minus three like that and we need to take the square so instead of five and three suppose we have a and b then what will you get a minus b the whole square and a minus b the whole square formula all of you know it is a square i am doing the right hand side now a square plus b square minus 2a so this is what i obtained from left hand side and right hand side now look at this in this case you can see here the least value of cos theta is minus 1 for the angle theta is equal to 180 degree so when you take theta is equal to 180 degree cos theta is minus 1 so this plus sign becomes minus so you will get a square plus b square minus 2ab equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab so you will get a left hand side is equal to right hand side now for all other values we can see value of cos theta will be greater than minus 1. So it will go from minus 1 to plus 1. So in such a situation, you can see this part will be greater. Suppose the theta value is uh, uh, 60 degree. So you will get a, a square plus b square plus a b. Cos is t is 1 by 2, this 2 will cancel. So this value will remain. Uh, plus otherwise it will be minus even though it is minus it will be less than uh, minus 1 so in such a situation all other cases other than 180 degree the left hand side will be weaker so we can put the sign like this now that's equal to this part we can simplify greater than or equal to this is mod of a already what we have done we see mod of b the whole square and right hand side we know it is mod of a plus b the whole square which we have taken together now take the square root of the relation then you will get a mod of a plus b is greater than or equal to mod of a minus mod of b so that will be the relation given there now come to part c part c Again, we can follow the same pattern. We can take a mod of a minus b. So, how can we simplify that? Again, we will take the square, then cosine rule we have to apply a square plus b square minus 2ab cos theta minus 2ab cos theta come to the right hand side it is just two uh, scalar quantities as i mentioned in the previous case just like 5 and 3 we take the square so a plus b the whole square will come a plus b the whole square you know a square plus b square plus 2ab Now look at the case. This is plus 2ab. Here already the minus sign is there. Now here also when cos theta is uh, 180 degree, cos theta becomes minus 1. So this time becomes plus. So then you will get a square plus b square plus 2ab equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. So the equal condition you will get when cos, th when cos theta is equal to minus 1 and theta is equal to 180 degree. All other cases you can see because of this minus sign, the left hand side will be less than right hand side. So 
so we can write like this which means we can have a minus b should be taken as a single vector the whole square is less than or equal to a minus b modulus only magnitude we will take here the whole square once again take the square root so you will get a mod of a minus b the single vector is less than or equal to mod of a minus mod of b so that's the same given there to prove so that's the case now next case d case d here first left hand side we can see it is a minus b is the a minus b mod of a minus b again a minus b must be taken as a single vector a minus b we can square as we have done in the previous case you will get a a square plus b square minus 2 ab cos theta for so, the rule we have to apply because this is a resultant vector r is equal to that formula we have to use now look at the right hand side it is a minus b again separately a minus b as two numbers so when you square you will get a square plus b square minus 2 ab so this is the left hand side and right hand side will be square now again here also we can see the situation suppose theta is equal to 0 when theta is equal to 0 cos 0 is 1 so you will get the equal cos 0 1 so you get it now next see the situation value of cos theta we can say the maximum value is 1 all other values are less than that So for example take cos 60 cos 60 is 1 by 2 this cos 60 1 by 2 then 2 and 2 cancel what do you get a square plus b square minus 2ab no, sorry minus ab here a square plus b square minus 2ab okay if you take theta 60 degree one example i tell you then cos 60 is 1 by 2 2 and 2 cancel it becomes minus ab while here the subtracting term is minus 2 ab so the bigger value is subtracted here so which one will be greater than here small value is subtracted so which part will be greater so here we can see this part will be greater because only small value is subtracted here big value is subtracted from a square plus b square so you will get this relation and uh, again we can see it is uh, mod of a minus b single vector resultant vector r square we have taken we got now it is greater than or equal to mod of a minus mod of b the whole square now take the square root you will get uh, mod of single vector a minus b resultant vector is greater than or equal to mod of a minus mod of b that is what we need to prove and when does the equality equality sign in each case we have already discussed now come to question 7 four vectors a plus b plus c plus d equal to 0 that is a condition given there now which of the following statements are correct so part a we take a b c and a b c and d must each be a null vector the question says that a equal to 0 b equal to 0 c equal to 0 and d equal to 0 then only you will get that equation given okay it's not necessary right 
Suppose uh, a plus b, a plus b equal to minus c plus d. minus c plus d. So in such a situation, what will happen? Uh, when you add, you will get a 0. Because a plus b minus c plus d, and they, if they are equal, then you will get 0. So it is not as a each one should be a null vector. So the statement is not correct. Their sum should be 0. That will Next. The magnitude of A plus C equals the magnitude of B plus D. That's right. When you add A and C, A and C, the magnitude of A plus C. And that must be equal and opposite to magnitude of B plus D. If they are equal and opposite, then only you will get zero. Sum of two vectors should be equal and opposite to the sum of other two vectors. Then only when you add all more of them, you will get zero. So, correct statement. Next, the magnitude of A can never be greater than the sum of B, C, and D. Okay. So we add B plus C plus D. You will get a value and this is ordered with the a then suppose they are equal and opposite if they are equal and opposite you will get the answer c suppose a is greater than this just like uh, for example if you take uh, this will give you five and a is in the opposite direction with but its magnitude greater than this six so you will not get zero. If you want to get zero, then A also should have magnitude five. So that five minus five becomes zero. So question never be greater than. Okay, that is correct. Never be greater than the sum of other three vectors. Now, next case. B plus C must lie in the plane of A and D if a and D are not polylinear. The condition you have to see very carefully. B plus C sum should be taken as a single vector B plus C. And A and D. A and D are not collinear. Okay. So I will take uh, A like this vector a in this way then vector b sorry vector a a and d now vector d i will take like this vector d now you can see they are not parallel they are not polylinear then B plus C must lie in the same plane. Okay. So what will happen? When you add A and D, triangular law you can use. This is a single vector A plus D. Then, so understand A and D are not collinear, so they are some then B, B plus C must be in the same plane of A and D. So B plus C, B plus C should be in the same plane. Why? What is the reason? B plus C in the same plane. Because we have to get the total zero. If you want to get the total zero, you should add A plus B and B plus C means these two vectors you have to add a plus b and b plus c if you want to add a plus b and b plus c they should be in the same plane so that you can see like this 
here suppose b plus c is like this a plus d the sum is like this when you add what is the answer answer becomes zero so once again i repeat b plus c means this vector must in the plane of a and b in the plane of a and d if a and d are not collinear means what a d are in a plane a plus d in the same plane b plus c also in the same plane so that you can add a plus d and b plus c their sum becomes zero okay so that first part is the correct statement come to the second part and a and d are in the line sorry b plus c in the line of a and d if they are collinear okay suppose a and d are collinear draw the case like this a then d so a and d are collinear collinear in the sense they are in the same line then b plus c must be in the same must be in the same line suppose they are in the same line collinear we can add when you add you will get the resultant vector like this resultant vector that is this is a plus d now is it possible if b plus c is like this so that their sum becomes zero not possible if you want to make their sum zero then b plus c should be like this with the same magnitude b plus c now what happens if b plus c is in the same line of a and d when a and d are collinear then a d and b plus c must be in the same line if it is in this way that you cannot add a d with the b plus c so that you get the sum zero once again i repeat a question says that a and d are collinear means they are parallel like this then b plus c should be in the same line of a and d then only when you add you will get zero in such a way that a plus d equal to you will get from here a plus d and in the same line b plus c is also acting opposite way with the same magnitude so that their sum is zero if b plus c is not in the same line as shown here then you will get a result and by applying a triangular law in this pattern so that their sum is not zero so this condition is not possible if they are collinear then b plus c must be in the same line of a and d then only you will get their sum zero therefore that statement also correct statement all okay now next come to question h three paths are given then uh, 200 meter is the radius of the circle what is the magnitude of displacement vector for each in all the cases it travels from initial point to final point displacement will be same in all the cases magnitude of displacement will be 200 meter then for which girl is this equal to the actual length of the path okay that no doubt answer is b now question 9 a cyclist okay uh, details are given cyclist takes 10 minute for a round trip 
we are asked to calculate what is the net displacement, average velocity, and uh, average speed. Radius of the circular track is one kilometer. Radius of the circular track. Now, first of all, you can see the here one confusion is there in that question whether the cyclist follows clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction. So, clearly, I tell take clockwise direction. Okay, sorry, take anti clockwise direction from P to Q like this. So, no confusion afterwards. So, returns back round trip. Okay, as uh, so the cyclist returns back, then you know the net displacement will be zero. Average velocity is also zero. Now, average speed we have to calculate. How much is the average speed? Here, one kilometer. Here, one kilometer. Here, how many kilometers? Here, two pi r is a circumference. One by fourth. One by fourth of two pi r. One by fourth of two pi r means it is pi r by so total displacement is 1 plus 1 plus pi r by 2. So substitute the values and find total displacement is equal to 1 plus 1 plus pi r by 2. You will get total displacement time taken. Okay, if you want to calculate in hour, then 10 by 60 hour is the time taken. So that average speed you can calculate. Okay. Average speed is equal to total distance divided by total time taken. Substitute the values and find the answer. Question 10. And open ground. The track is left by 60 degree. Already I have shown there 60 degree. Every time after traveling, five after every 500 meter. So this distance. Everywhere this distance is 500 meter. Okay. So we have six segments of 500 meter. So you will get a regular hexagon. Then compare the magnitude of displacement with the total path length in each case and in the question i think it is given third turn sixth turn then eighth turn okay you can follow different methods to solve this question either you can use purely trigonometric methods or you can use vector resolution method also okay as some of you are not so familiar with the trigonometry you will go for a vector Resolution method. So, first case, we are going to take third ten. Third ten. Third ten means uh, the cyclist traveled up to point C. Up to point C. Okay. Up to point C means we can. This is a displacement. OC is the displacement of the cyclist. OC. First of all, how much is the distance traveled by the cyclist? Distance is equal to 1500 meter. There are three segments of 500 meter each. Next, we calculate the displacement of the cyclist. Displacement when we calculate, you know, displacement is a vector quantity. Direction also we need to consider now. So when we consider direction, the displacement, I will resolve into components. How to resolve the displacement into component? The first case, starting from point O, you can see purely traveling along x axis, we can say only x component is there. But after reaching here, the second segment, we can resolve like this one vertical component along y-axis and one horizontal component along x-axis. 
and horizontal component here angle 60 degree horizontal component will be in terms of cos theta and vertical component in terms of sin theta and again this part also 500 and uh, third segment third segment again we can resolve into perpendicular components like this can have a vertical component and horizontal component will change the direction now towards here and from the initial direction what is the total uh, deviation from the angle initial direction 60 degree first time at a 60 degree second time at b so total 120 degree difference is there 120 degree difference 60 plus 60 okay now anyway i'm going to write the x component and y components separately so let me take the x component first x is equal to first segment it is only along x axis so 500 from o to a plus second horizontal component will be again 500 is the magnitude and cos 60 will give you the horizontal component plus third case you can see 500 cos 120 i told you already okay 120 degree angle so you have to simplify then cos 120 cos 120 is minus sine 30 okay we have formula is there cos 90 plus theta is equal to minus sine theta so cos 90 plus theta cos 90 plus theta means cos 90 plus 30 will come you get a minus sine 30 sine 30 is 1 by 2 so the last term becomes minus 1 by uh, cos 1 by t uh, cos 120 becomes minus 1 by 2 okay you have to simplify then you will get the answer around 500 now we can write y components when you write y components you know first component is zero only because from o to a it is purely along x axis then 500 cos sorry 500 sin 60 plus 500 sin 120 500 sin 120 so you have to simplify and find the answer here also you have to use the formula sin 90 plus theta so simplify and find the value of sin 90 plus theta sin 90 plus theta is cos theta okay so now you have to simplify cos 30 will come cos 30 is root 3 by 2 sin 60 is also root 3 by 2 when you simplify you will get 500 root 3 now you have x component and y components of displacement so you can calculate s is equal to under root x square plus y square you will get a resultant displacement substitute the values of x and y and find the answer that is for the third term next the case of sixth term so we have sixth 10. Sixth turn means uh, so we have to see the situation here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 means the initial position. So initial position you can see first uh, displacement we can take initial position. 
we have uh, the total six times 500, so you will get a 3000 meter is the distance and displacement. Cyclist reaches the starting point, so it becomes zero. No displacement. And third case, eighth day. Eighth turn, distance is equal to. So after sixth turn, two more turns. Now at point B. So it becomes 4000 distance. 4000 meter. And how to find the displacement? Okay, this time the displacement you have to find this displacement. This is a displacement you need to find. You have to follow the same method which we have used in the third case. Find the value of x. x this time you will get a 500 plus 500 cos 60. Then y is equal to 0 plus 500 sin 60 the y component of displacement then find the value of s using the formula s is equal to under root x square plus y square under root x square plus y square you will get the answer so complete the problem okay now Go to question 11. A passenger arriving in a new town, okay, wish to reach the hotel located 10 km straight road. So, straight road if he travels 10 km. A dishonest cab man takes him along a circuitous path of 23 km. So, distance travel. Hotel in 28 minutes. What is the average speed and magnitude of average velocity? Are they equal? Okay. So, first, average speed. So, average speed is equal to distance divided by time. And distance we know 23 kilometer. 23 kilometer and uh, time is 28 minutes so 28 by 60 hour so you get the answer then average velocity also you need to calculate so average velocity is displacement by time Displacement is only 10 kilometer along straight. 10 kilometer divided by time will be same 28 by 60. So you will get the answer for a average velocity. Then are they equal? Definitely they are not equal. Next question 12. Rain is falling vertically with a speed of 30 meter per second. So just like here, it is wrong. Rain falls vertically. Velocity of rain with 30 meter per second. A woman rides a bicycle with a speed of 30 meter per second from north to south direction. For convenience, I'm taking like this north to south direction like this so the velocity of the bicycle okay what is the direction in which she should hold her umbrella just upon you see rain is there the cyclist is moving the umbrella must be held opposite to their relative velocity i repeat Umbrella must be held. So two objects. Rain is in motion. Okay, raindrops are falling. 
cyclist also in motion so when two objects are in motion you need to take the relative velocity okay and when you take the relative velocity which relative velocity we need to take that also is a fact okay so here relative velocity of rain with respect to bicycle v r minus v b and opposite to this relative velocity upper class should be held okay then only so now we need minus v so if v b is in okay according to our diagram uh, this is small thing you will correct that diagram okay here Maybe we can take like this because the diagram is like that, or with two south. So V B now minus V B we can take like this minus V B. Now the resultant of V R at minus V B we have to get because it is V R minus V B. So a parallelogram we can complete. This will be V R P. V R B is equal to V R minus V B. That is why we are taking like this. And opposite to that resultant velocity, the upper class should be held when the cyclist is traveling in this direction. Okay. So upper class should be here, like this. Then what will be the direction? Theta. We need to find here also. Theta. Now how to find theta? Theta you can see here. Tan theta we can find there. Tan theta is equal to just magnitude we can take. That's enough. Tan theta is equal to this side here. It is parallel to V B. So V B divided by opposite side divided by adjacent side V R. V B by V R. So you substitute the value of V B and V R there. Then you will get the value of tan theta. From the value of tan theta, uh, you can find the angle. You will get uh, uh, this one approximately one by three. Tan theta one by three means theta will be around uh, eighteen degree table. You have to use to find tangent table. So that way we can see the upper law should be held uh, in which direction upper law should be held eighteen uh, degree. Towards south with the vertical. This is the vertical part. 18 degree towards south. 18 degree with the vertical towards south. That will be the answer. Now, question 13. Again, you can see a man can swim with a speed of 4 km per hour in still water. Still water, velocity of man is 4 km per hour, which we can take as Vm, velocity of the man, Vm. How long does he take to cross the river of 1 km? River with this 1 km. 1 km. If the river flows steadily with 3 km per hour, there's a river velocity also. Velocity of water also we need to consider. Vw. Okay, Vw is in this direction. Vw. He makes his trots normal to, to the river current. And how far the river does he go when he reaches the other bank? Okay, now, if water is still, what will happen? He will directly cross this river through this path and he will directly reach there just uh, traveling one kilometer. He will reach there and with the, what velocity? With the velocity four kilometer per hour. But now he cannot reach here at this point. What is the problem? Because he has a velocity 
vertically because he is taking the strokes normal to river current so vm will be in this direction velocity of the man but at the same time he will get a one more velocity which velocity the velocity of the water current vw so what happens he can travel only in the direction of resultant velocity so he is not going to reach at this point instead of that because of that horizontal velocity he will reach here only then what's the question we need to find uh, how much time he takes to reach here and what is the distance he traveled horizontally means what is this distance these are the two quantities we need to calculate and first of all you know many times you have seen the horizontal velocity and vertical velocity or horizontal motion and vertical motion are independent okay whether the water river gives a velocity or not uh, the man reaches the other bank according to his velocity in the vertical direction so in vertical direction how much distance he has to travel he has to travel what or we one kilometer only and what is his vertical velocity his vertical velocity is 4 km per hour therefore time assuming okay not assuming we know the horizontal motion and vertical motion are independent therefore time we can calculate distance divided by velocity of the man that is 1 divided by 4 km Uh, one kilometer divided by four kilometer per hour. So you will get the answer. One by four hour it takes to reach the other bank. Okay, because once again I repeat, the horizontal motion and vertical motion are independent. He has to travel a vertical distance one kilometer with the velocity vertical velocity four kilometer per hour. Now. the same time meanwhile this is during this 1 by 4 hour time he is having a horizontal displacement as shown here so take that uh, horizontal displacement as x and simultaneously it happens this horizontal displacement also x also with the uh, how much velocity horizontal velocity v w therefore the horizontal distance traveled by the man is equal to horizontal velocity vw into time taken and how much is vw vw is the uh, velocity of water current divided by time taken time taken is 1 by 4 okay the same time you will reach there so you will get it the horizontal distance okay this is marked as x the horizontal distance traveled by the man horizontal distance is equal to horizontal velocity into time vertical distance is equal to vertical velocity into time that is a concept we have used it 